Okay. Now we're trying to find that center line, which uh, in waterfowls, it, it can be really challenging. There is a fine line right on the keel bone, uh, right in the middle of the, in the center of the breast area, that uh, if you find that area, you're gonna make your incision without cutting through the feather tracks. And uh, when birds are frozen a little bit in a crooked shape in the freezer, it makes it hard when you're trying to find it out. But again, you know, if, if you're careful, it doesn't really matter. I, I'm trying to find that perfect spot right in the middle, but you will see that uh, I fail pretty good. <laughs> so basically, I, I end up going a little bit sideways. Wetting down the feathers, pushing the feathers aside, hoping for that magical little spot right in the middle. So anyway, I started the incision. Try to, uh, you know, when you're skinning a waterfowl, especially when it comes to ducks and geese, the skin kind of separates from the breast meat easily. But and the problem is that uh, all the fat, that big layer of fat is going with the skin. Unfortunately, we would like to leave them on the meat, but they go with the skin. That's just the way it is. Basically, I always call duck skins being pretty thin, extremely thin, being held together by layers of fat. So that's why when, uh, when you're skinning them, you feel that you have a pretty thick skin, but majority of it is just layers of fat. So starting to push my finger right underneath the knee joint so I can easily make sure without cutting the skin I'm going to cut the cartilage at the knee joint. You saw that my, I pushed my tweezer into that area to just give me uh, a good indicator that where my skin is before I do the cut. So after that, I keep skinning around the thigh and the upper breast, just uh, give myself more room. The white powder, I've been asked many times that what is that white powder? It's simply borax. I use it here to give me a better grip because the bird can be quite slimy and uh, slippery. So I use white borax, borax powder that uh, gives me a better grip. Now we're getting into the second knee area. And at the same time, I keep skinning all around the area to remove the tension from the skin. work my fingers around and behind the knee joint Cutting the knee cartilage.
both legs are detached from the body right now and we are skinning slowly going toward the rectum. Going around the rectum area, just to slowly past the rectum till we get to the tailbone. Cut off that rudder bone right in the middle of the tail, which is attached to the deck feathers on the tail. And then I go on the other side. You see that V shape of the tailbone? I slowly go around it, and the glands are there, the preening glands are there. You make sure you just uh, clean them out after. It would be easier to leave them on the skin right now, actually, and then clean them after. So now I start peeling the skin on the back of the duck and move my way forward toward in the shoulder area. Now we're getting close to the wing, right at the shoulder joint. The same thing, push your finger right underneath the wing area, the wing joint, where you're going to detach it from the body, just to ensure yourself that you won't be cutting the skin. Now from underneath the wing and shoulder joint, um, pulling out the, the, way, the main wing bone out from where it, where it atta attaches to the body. One thing that I need to tell you out there who are trying to learn, uh, the more you know the anatomy of the bird, the easier this is going to be for you and it's just a matter of expecting and knowing what's underneath the skin when it comes to skinning it and you know you usually don't get it right away either it's just paying attention to what you're doing so it you know um, adds to your um, 
anatomy knowledge for the next one. And you just need to do it over and over and over, multiple times in a row before you get the idea of what's going on. So anyway, both wings are detached. The skull was detached. Now we're pulling the neck simply out of the skin. Done. The skin is off the body as well. So we preserve the body in the best shape. So we have a good reference to carve our uh, foam body out of it later on. Okay, now we got to remove the meat off the legs and the rest of the wings. This duck is going to be in flying position. And being a duck, I'm quite comfortable with inverting the whole wing skin without cutting it from underneath. As I said, you know, there is there's two ways. One of them is inverting the wings, one of them is cutting the wings from underneath between the femur and uh, uh, I'm sorry between the ulna and uh, radius bone underneath the wing but in this case I'm going to invert the whole wing so right now I'm removing the meat off the bones cutting the tendons pulling all the drumstick muscles out of the bone. Now with a small circle cut around where the skin is attached to the scaly feet, I detach the whole feet. That will help me a lot more when I'm preserving and mounting the feet. So that's one foot coming out. And I repeat the same process on the other leg. We got both feet out. Okay, the first part of the wing is fully out. We keep skinning and inverting the wing forward toward the second part of the wing. Just make sure that if you're using scalpel to detach the wing layer, from the muscles on the wing, 
Uh, I mean, the skin layer from the muscle, you just make sure you don't put a cut on the wing skin because it's a pretty critical area to leave intact. Now with the push of the back of your knife or any kind of tool, you can detach all the primaries from the wing bone, which makes it quite easier to invert the whole wing. I usually continue this till the last bend in the wing and I stop right there, as you can see. As soon as I feel that the whole wing can move inverted, I stop and I uh, start cleaning the wing meat by cutting the tendons from both ends and just peeling them off. Scraping the bone is my favorite way of cleaning them. Side cutters actually work really well for cleaning those ball points at, uh, at any of those bones. And I like to actually cut those ball ends off because they're just going to create more problem problems when you're mounting the bird. They're embedded way deep inside the chest muscle, so when we're mounting them, we don't need them. Moving on to the second wing. Anyway, this video is coming to an end as well for um, the second part. And in the third video, we will continue for um, degreasing and wire wheeling this bird, which is basically um, the same technique that can be applied on any other birds. But ducks are a little bit more delicate, so you got to be a little bit more careful about them. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in video number three.